How you doing? Uh, this is Fred Wagner here. Uh, <laughs> My channel, obviously, uh, is mainly for airbrushing, but today I got a little do-it-yourself project. Hopefully it'll come out all right. Um, I'm making rod holders for my fishing kayak. This is a rod holder I made already and I'm going to uh, show you how I did this one. It's not really technical, it's not very hard at all, really. Uh, I got an inch and a quarter PVC piping from my local uh, Home Depot store, which for those who doesn't don't know who uh, Home Depot is, is a, a DIY store, a do-it-yourself store. All right, I got my inch and a quarter PVC piping and I rough cut it with a hacksaw down to 11 inches. I've got my drill here. I got a half inch drill bit. I've got a wood rasp. I, I believe that's what they call this. Got a marker. A piece of sandpaper. I just happen to have 320 grit sitting here. A heat gun. I've got a bottle. <laughs> this is uh, a Christmas decoration or wine. De I don't know what you call it. It's not really Christmas. Uh, just a bottle for shaping the top and a bowl of ice water. You can just use regular water. I don't think it really matters. It's just to cool this back down once you heat it up. So I'm going to start out here so I don't make this too long. I just, any marker, it doesn't matter. And uh, I'm going to put the print on the back side of this one because that's going to be against my crate. And I'm just going to eyeball right about where I want to drill that. And all that's uh, just this slot is for the trigger on your uh, fishing poles to go. So I got my drill here. Put my drill bit in. It's very easy to make. I've seen other videos. Got it on my drill setting. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna move this one out of the way that I've already made. All right. And this is my art table. <laughs> I'm gonna have to vacuum up. I'm just gonna pilot the hole. All right. And that's why there's a mark in there directly below that hole. I'm going to try to keep the mess contained. <laughs> I'm doing this in my house. I don't have a work table. Okay, that's all drilled. Now, I'm going to attempt to do this. Let's see. Uh, doesn't matter. About this. this is just so I can follow semi straight line the wood rasp is gonna open it up even further just drawing a straight line down here yesterday I used a coping saw not coping saw in fact I do have a coping saw that might work too um, to cut this today I'm gonna attempt to use the jigsaw if it doesn't work, I gotta change strategies. Problem with the jigsaw is the blade's a little bit deep. So I gotta be. Yeah, let's let's try this direction. Nope. Ain't gonna work. That's too dangerous. I'm gonna hack my finger off. Don't wanna do that. Probably get a million hits though. Okay, I'm gonna go back to what I was doing yesterday. And this didn't work very good. It's a miter saw, sorry. I just remembered. I do have a coping saw though. A coping saw might work better. So. Just. Whew. Come on, hands. I'm not a very mechanical person. This worked yesterday better. Right, we're getting that start to the cut. 
And I'm just gonna use the tip of it. I gotta be careful so I don't cut my hand open. I've got enough cuts on it. This might be wiggling like crazy for you. I'm gonna leave that end attached a little bit so I can make my other cut. Let's do this a little smoother. Ah. It would work real good if I had a Dremel. But, you know, people think I'm in an earthquake. Now this side I'm gonna cut all the way down to that hole. There we go. All right, I got that hole cut. Simple as that. Like I said, I'm gonna try to contain this as best as I can. I use this table for airbrushing. All right, now, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it or not with this. Well, that's, uh, I made that a lot thinner. Okay, let's give this a shot. Put my little wood rasp tool in here. No, that's not gonna work. There we go. All right. down to the bottom of that hole. Okay, simple as that. All right. I just pick off some of these frayed pieces. You could use a knife to get some of that. In fact, I might. I'm going to grab an X-Acto tool here. Just to get some of that flashing off of there. Alright, there's another tool. <laughs> Clean up some of this. That's just to make it easier to sand. Okay, good enough. Hey, right. now you got a nice slot there. Take a little sandpaper and hit these edges. This is 320 grit, like I said. I'm trying to keep you in. My viewfinder. Taking off those rough little ledges. PVC seems to sand really well. Let's make this a little smaller. Yeah. I already sanded the top edge yesterday when I first cut my links. So all I gotta really do is this part of it. move you guys back this way a little bit more all right and there's our basic cut now next step is the heat gun one rule of thumb never ever grab this end by mistake <laughs> it just gets hot all right now, move my sandpaper out of the way Let's brush a little of this off up in here with my drill. Oh, what a mess. Oi, oi, oi. 
I'll tell you what I'm gonna do real quick. This thing's almost dead. As you can hear, the charge doesn't last. I gotta get a new battery in that or something. All right, just to get this, so I don't melt these onto the table. All right, next step. Gonna get that, that. Let's see, how am I here? Let's move this up a little. There, that might be better. All right, now we're gonna just take our heat gun and start heating this. It doesn't take too long. You can use a torch, I've seen people use torch. I used the heat gun yesterday when I made the other one. I'm just going to zip tie these to an egg crate. I'm just keeping it turning so I don't uh, so I don't burn start it burning. You can use it. I saw a person use a torch on this. I just happen to have a ni nice heat gun here. Don't touch that plastic, it gets very, very hot. Once you see it start curling a little bit, you know you've got it hot enough. The hotter you get it, the easier it'll bend, but then the longer it'll take to cool down. Okay, it's starting to curl, and you notice the coloration starting to burn on the edge a little bit. I can start to smell the plastic. Then I take it immediately and put it on this bottle head, or bottleneck. And I'm going to leave it there just a little bit. Not long. I'm not going to spread it too far. Let that hold there. Take it up. No, it's springing back still. All right, and then immediately into the cold water. And let it just sit there in the cold water. Move this bottle out of the way. You check it. There, it's hardened back up, nice and solid. Just that little bit. All right, now, Move that out of the way. Now we can take our sandpaper again. And I like to round this down a little bit on my last one. Just so it doesn't scratch into the pole, catch your line. Now I'm going to do also something else here. Just in case you're going to want to mount this onto your... Uh, onto your fishing box or your egg crate or milk crate, egg crate, yeah right. Your milk crate. Hey, right, see I rounded that down so it doesn't catch on your poles so much. It doesn't take much, this PVC. Uh... Now we can, now that we've got that in there, mm. We can sand that bottom down a little bit easier. Smooth these out. This one even came out better than my other one. Now you can rough sand this whole thing. 
the whole tube and then paint it whatever color you like to match your kayak. I'm thinking about, I'm gonna have a black crepe, but what I'm thinking about is maybe sanding it and painting an orange to match my color of my kayak. Cause I got the copper head color. All right, there you go. Now another thing we're gonna do, is gonna take a smaller drill bit here and yeah, we could use the half inch actually. Now the best thing to do is measure on your egg or your milk crate, I keep saying egg crate, where your points are gonna be for screwing it in. So, uh, and then you're gonna do a larger hole on this top side, this side you don't need it. You can put it into here. Uh, And this is just, I'm, I'm not even going to do it this way. I'm zip tying it. So I'm going to use a quarter inch bit for this. Right. And I'm going to come straight down here. Approximately where a mounting point would be. Careful, it's going to dance on you. Almost wonder if I should. There we go. Alright. Going to do quarter inch and then clean this a little bit with the exacto blade like so now you know what I got a feeling well you know what I think skip that Let's go back to the, uh, I'm sorry, I said a half inch, it's three eighths inch. Let's go back to the three eighths inch hole. I'm gonna re-drill this, which I knew was gonna happen like that. All right, that way you can get a screw head in there. All right, and then down inside, straight across from that, we're just gonna draw, drill a smaller hole uh, let's see, I'm going to pick, for the heck of it, for now, I don't know what size screw I'm going to, if I use one, I'm going to go with 964th strange size, and then straight across from this hole, I'm going to drill a hole straight out the other side. Okay, if you could see that, I don't know if you could see that. It's straight out the other side, little hole here. That's for your screw to come out. So you can put the screwdriver and uh, screw down through the bigger hole and out the smaller hole. And then up here, straight back from this. And there you go. You got your two mounting holes. Just clean up. Oh, that was good. I don't have a chamfer tool or whatever they call it. I used to. Yeah, none in here. But there you go. Clean that up a little bit. And then down inside. Let's try to. There's another idea that just came to mind. Is uh, make sure you make it to where you can reach that 
holes to smooth them out. I was just taking that plastic off. Burr on the inside. Burr. That's cold. Dude, you're just cold. Yes, I get strange on my videos. And let's clean that. A little more. Okay. That's it. Got a rod holder. Rod holder. I said that weird. Hey. Okay. Let me go grab a fishing rod. Eh, uh, nah, I can't. Yeah, I can. Hold on. Two seconds. All right, here's my fishing rod here. And you just reach over. I got spider webs, it's been sitting for a long time. Slide that pole in. I have my reels in the way. But see, you got that. It sits in there. And that can't go any further. Your rod won't turn on you. And an inch and a quarter fits most rod the butts of the rods. Sorry. Okay. okay. Have a good day. Enjoy. Have a safe time fishing. And uh, there you go. A little uh, homemade custom rod holder. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. This is Fred Wagner. God bless. Peace.